Hi, I'm Zach of Josh's Frogs, and today is the first of many weekly Josh's Frogs video blogs. We will talk about things such as new products on the website, how-to guides, um, any helpful hints in a hobby we've come across over the years, upcoming shows, and also our weekly frog availability. Okay, for our first helpful hint of the week, we're going to talk about feeding stations and their use concerning dart frogs in Bavaria. A feeding station is simply something that attracts food um, in the vivarium and thus attracts the frogs to it. For this I find a piece of banana works really really well. The flies in the tank will be attracted to the banana and thus the frogs will be attracted to the flies. Um, the flies will also lay maggots on the banana which the frogs will enjoy eating. As the banana breaks down it will also feed the microfauna, the springtails and the isopods in the tank. It will also serve to attract the frogs out making um, newer frogs or shyer frogs more bold so you can easily observe them and also helps ensure that every frog in the tank gets its fair share of food through the use of multiple feeding stations to spread out the food a little bit more. This week we have several new feeders on our website, one of which are hornworms. Hornworms are fantastic food for animal. They're very, very high in calcium. They're very, very low in fat. They also have no chitin to worry about, unlike mealworms and superworms. Hornworms also grow very, very fast, which is an easy way to provide food to larger animals such as bearded dragons. An adult full-grown hornworm actually weighs as much as three dozen large crickets. Captive bred hornworms are also non-toxic as opposed to the wild collected hornworm. You can also control the hornworm's growth very easily. But you can keep them cooler to slow their growth or warmer to speed it up. They're also very hardy and easy to keep and feed out as opposed to silkworms. They're now available on the website in 25 count smaller size or 12 count larger size worms. Check out the link below and start feeding your herbs better today. Josh's Frogs is also now proud to offer a variety of exoterra canned feeders, such as grasshoppers, silkworms, mealworms, crickets, and snails. These canned feeders are intended as treats for your pet, not a staple diet. They're a great way to add variety to the diet of your herb. They're also great for tong or bull feeding. Just make sure you refrigerate after opening. Check out the link below. And now for this week's frog availability. All of the following animals are captive, bred, and born. For tree frogs, we currently have both red eyes and albino red eye tree frogs available, as well as black eyes and yellow eyed tree frogs. We also have emerald eye tree frogs, also known as ghost tree frogs, as well as super tiger leg monkey frogs. New this week, we also have Vietnamese bird crap frogs, also known as scientifically as Theloderma asperum. These are very close relatives of the Vietnamese mossy frogs, which I'm sure quite a few of you are familiar with, but they have a much smaller size, around one and a quarter inches full grown. Um, as they're younger, they mimic, you know, bird poop, and as they get older, they resemble tree bark. Um, they are very nicely colored in brown, white, and black. They're a very neat, very cryptic animal. Um, they also have nice dark red eyes that stand out pretty, pretty vividly against the background when they're hanging out. Primarily nocturnal, they are mostly terrestrial when they're younger and they become more aquatic when they're adults. They are also fine with very, very small enclosures, a 10 gallon being fine, suitable for three or four of these animals. For Pac-Man frogs, we currently have ornate Pac-Mans, Cranwall's Pac-Mans of both the green and brown forms, and fantasy frogs available. Fantasy frogs are a hybrid between Cephratoris Cranwalla and Cephratoris Cornuta. Cornuta is also known as a Suriname horned frog. It's very difficult to keep in, the, in captivity due to the fact that it eats mainly frogs in the wild. So this natural hybrid provides you with an easy to care for, very, very easy to keep frog that has all the appearance of a wild type Cornuta. For dart frogs, we have a wide variety available today. All of our dart frogs are produced here at Josh's Frogs by us, including Phyllobates vitatus, Phyllobates bicolor, three different kinds of Ventromaculatus, Amazonicus, Leucomelus, Truncatus, quite a few varieties of Rodus, including turquoise and bronze Rodus, which are fairly uncommon morph in the hobby. Um, these Rodus are much larger than most other Rodus, and they tend to be very bold too. Um, they also are very, very um, varied in colors. Um, a clutch of them can consist of a background color anywhere from teal to blue to green. Um, with their dark speckling either being lined or in circles. Um, very, very random coloration and patterns, which make them look very varied. They're also great group frogs, and like I said, they're very large. Um, some of them are about the size of a medium-sized Tinctorius, and they're very, very bold. Um, we also have a wide variety of Tinctorius available, such as yellowheads, citronellas, 
um, yellow backs, cobalts, uh, powder blues, among others. All of our available frogs are listed every Friday. And now for upcoming shows. Later this month, June 18th and 19th, Josh's Frogs will be vending at the Columbia, South Carolina Repticon. Make sure you click on the link below for more information. We'll be driving down Thursday, setting up Friday, and then vending Saturday and Sunday, so make sure you stop by, say hi, and check out some of the great supplies and animals we'll have with us. Also, if there's anything specific you want at the show, make sure to pre-order. Josh's Frogs delivers to free to any show that we vend at.